Welcome to chapter 18 of the book of Leviticus. We are going to go through the laws regarding indecency. The word indecency basically deals with sexual uh, indecency, sexual activity, and in other places, uh, that word, the Greek word as we'll get to it, uh, has to do with the, a physical uh, indecency, uh, nakedness and uh, exposing one's uh, genitals and so forth, or not even the genitals, could be just the naked, nakedness and so things like that uh, from one sex to the other. And, but it begins and it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Again, speak to the sons of Israel and the imperatives. And he's again there on Mount Sinai or around Sinai and telling Moses and what to tell the people. They're only a couple of years away from being in uh, Egypt. Uh, and so they were in Egypt for about 400 years. So now they're just barely out of it. And anyway, he says, you shall say to them, I am the Lord your God. Ego kyrios o theos imon. Ego is the ego, I, the ego, uh, my e, I have a big ego, an I, I, and kyrios, Lord, theos, theology, and the derivatives. According to the practices of the land of Egypt, where they had left a couple of years ago, so the people are very familiar with it, that's most how most of them it were all uh, all the practices and everything they did came from Egypt, uh, not any place else. Now they're learning otherwise. Uh, in which you sojourned in it for four hundred years, you shall not do. Forty one sixty. The verb to do. Pao. We'll see it how it uses it in other contexts, and the do changes to another word. And according to the practices of the Gies of Canaan, into which I bring you there, you shall not do. So even where they're going, what the people are doing, you're not to do. They're to be a special people, a holy people, set aside for God's purposes, just as we are. Uh, we are not to do the things before that we have lived in uh, without Christ in the things of this world, the things of this country, whichever country you're in, it would things and the practices would differ in all the countries. What may be acceptable in one wouldn't be necessarily acceptable uh, in another. And uh, so we are not to do that. My judgments you shall do, or I have execute here, there's that 4160 to do. You shall execute a judgment, basically. Uh, and my orders you shall keep. So uh, we're to do what God uh, says, his um, instructions to us with orders and so forth, judgments. And we are to do do uh, what he says and not, to, in our, not do what he says not to do. Uh, and shall go by them. That's just the way we go. I am Kyrios Theosimon. Ego Kyrios Theosimon. And we now as Christians go by the way of Christ. And his way is different than the way that these people were going by. Uh, they were going, uh, being directed by God in, in a different way than through Christ. They were directed by here, the cloud and fire, column of fire, uh, and then by the priesthood. And it was that way for a thousand years. But until Christ came, then the way changed. And you shall, because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And you shall keep all my orders and all my judgments and you shall observe them, by which a man observing them shall live by them. So uh, this is a quotation that's in uh, Romans 10.5 and Galatians 3.12. So uh, 
observing the laws and judgments, we live by them. Now, the laws and the judgments and things, we will see here what is uh, we are not to do it down here with indecency. And you start wondering, well, before we talked about things to eat and the unclean, but yet in the New Testament, God changed it and made things clean uh, that were unclean. And then it mentions, Paul mentions about we uh, no longer have to observe times and Sabbaths and seasons and so forth. Uh, every day is the Lord's day, basically, as the way I see it. But now, does that mean that other things no longer apply? Uh, the uh, orders of behavior and so forth? Well, I don't think they have changed. I mean, you have the Ten Commandments, stealing, lying. Well, lying's not one of them, but um, murder and adultery and so forth. We are not, we're, we are to observe them. They have not changed. But if it has changed, it mentions it in the New Testament, then it's a different story. That's the way I see it. Now, it goes again to that, a man, a man, anthropos, anthropos. A man, a man shall not draw near to any family member of his flesh to uncover their indecency. Eskimosini, um, shame or uh, indecency. Um, and again, it, it has to do here with uh, sexual relations with um, family members or not to uh, do that. And then it goes into detail. At go curios. Uh, the indecency of your father. And, and the indecency is more of an euphemism. It's a, a good word for uh, rather than using uh, the sexual connotation, more or less, uh, using this word. Uh, the indecency of your father and the indecency of your mother you shall not uncover. That is, have sex with your parents, if you're a male or a female. Uh, she is your mother. Her indecency you shall not uncover. So no, not to have sex with a parent. The indecency of a wife of your father you shall not uncover. It is your father's indecency. It's his sexual, uh, his partner. And we go and see that now is still in the New Testament, it's still looked down on. So uh, it says, harlotry, holy is heard among you, in Romans 5, 1, uh, and such harlotry which not even among the nations is named, so as far, one, to have his father's wife. Apparently that wouldn't be his mother, but a man that was, had another wife. And you, are you being inflated and not rather mourned? that the one having done this work should be removed from your midst. So Paul is now showing the same thing, that this is still indecent. So this is not uh, something that no, is okay now in the New Testament. Now, how as we go through all these, it's interesting because this is uh, what God has set up for the, his people but I'm sure there's a lot of countries where uh, s that uh, sexual mores differ as far as the people go, maybe in tribal areas. Uh, it's common to have uh, sex with a cousin or so forth, and I really don't know what they would be. You, the listener, would know more than I would if it what it is in your custom, but God is setting out here, I believe, the indecency that he considers. So basically a parent having uh, are a father's a wife, it would be indecent. I would imagine the, uh, a mother's husband also for a female. And the indecency of your sister from out of your father or from out of your mother. Uh, patros, we have paternal comes from that. And Metros maternal comes from that. Adelphi, a sister. 
Well, Adolfo's brother, Sir, this uh, Adolf, uh, Philadelphia, Adelphia, city of brotherly love. So uh, the sister from the father, natural, are being uh, procreated outside, and exactly what that is, I'm not sure. I'd have to talk to a rabbi to see how they what they consider that, uh, maybe through marriage. You shall not uncover their indecency. The indecency of a daughter of your son, uh, so that would be your granddaughter, or a daughter of your daughter, uh, still a granddaughter from the daughter or the, or the son or the daughter, you shall not uncover their indecency, for it is your indecency. This is your, uh, it's part of you. Uh, and the way it uses this word indecency is strange, but this is the way it is. The indecency of the daughter of your father's wife, you shall not uncover. So, um, so if the father apparently is married to a different woman and um, she has a daughter, then you not to have sex with her. Uh, she is uh, your sister of the same father. You shall not uncover her indecency. The indecency of your father's sister so uh, that would be your aunt, you shall not uncover, uh, for she is a member of the family of your father. Now, the other one here, I think, uh, was the indecency of the daughter of your father's wife. <laughs> the daughter, your father's wife's daughter. So, but it, it's the father's um, wife, and they had, had he be her stepsister, half-sister, I suppose, uh, I had a half sister. My mother was married uh, once before my to my before my father. So and I had she had a son and a daughter, and the son was killed in the Second World War in the Battle of the Bulge. And my sister is my half sister, so uh, indecency to have relations with her. The indecency of your mother's sister, that would be your aunt on your maternal aunt, you shall not uncover. She, for she is a member of the family of your mother. The indecency of a brother of your father, that's your uncle, uh, you shall not uncover. I would imagine that would be for a, the wa daughter, maybe, a uh, woman here. And to his wife, you shall not enter. Your uncle's wife, so if, if you're a male, uh, for she is your relative. The indecency of your daughter-in-law, you shall not uncover. Uh, she is, for she is your son's wife. You shall not uncover her indecency. And so you have a daughter-in-law, then she is off limits. The indecency of your brother's wife, that would be your sister-in-law, you shall not uncover. It is your brother's indecency. The indecency of a woman, now it doesn't mean that it's indecent, but it belongs to the brother, the, the law of indecency mainly. doesn't mean it's indecent for him. The indecency of a woman and her daughter you shall not uncover. So uh, if you have a f relations with a woman, you can't have relations with that woman's daughter. Or if you have a, a woman if she has a mother, then you're not to have relationships with that woman's mother. Uh, the daughter of her son and the daughter of her daughter you shall not take to uncover their indecency. Now the daughter, the grand, so the granddaughter, the, that would be the granddaughter you're not to uh, take uh, indecency even of a, so if you have a woman you can't take the wife and you can't take the the daughter. Let me see. I go here. Jump around. Uh, they are members of your family. It is an act of impiety. You shall not take a wife in addition to her sister as a rival to uncover her indecency instead of her while she is still living. Now, when she's dead, then... Um, Actually, they were supposed to take the wife if it didn't have a child because they came to 
Jesus and said, well, if a man had a, a wife and the, she died and a brother-in-law took her but n- didn't raise a uh, uh, heir, then the next, they took uh, seven wives, which one after he's dead, is she, which husband is going to be the husband uh, after she's dead because she died without any uh, heir. So uh, the uh, sister, though, as long as you're married. Now, before here, back in the uh, age of the fathers with Abraham, of course, they did marry sisters. Uh, and Jacob had two, had two sisters, uh, Leah, Rachel. And to a wife in a separation of uncleanness, you shall not enter to uncover her indecency, and that is her during her menstrual cycle. And to the wife of your neighbor, you shall not give a marriage bed of your semen to be thoroughly defiled with her. So uh, adultery, basically, with the neighbor's wife. And you shall not give of your semen to serve a ruler what exactly that means, and apparently they had um, sex, if a ruler had some type of uh, sexual rituals, you're not to do that and go along with that, and I believe they they did do that, Uh, and the time the kings will go through and find out when uh, this didn't happen. And you shall not profane the holy name, I am the Lord, and profane profaning God's name, uh, whether it's uh, Yahweh, Jehovah, or uh, I am the one who is, or I believe Christ, Jesus Christ. And with a man you shall not go, an arsenos, a male, you shall not go to bed, uh, in a marriage bed. Ketin, we have coitus, comes from that, in the feminine way. So now it's an abomination. So is it still an abomination? Yes, because in the New Testament we go in there and homosexuality is an abomination even in the New Testament. So uh, it did not was not eliminated because of the difference of the law between the Testaments. And two, any four-footed creatures, a tetrapoon or tetrapod, uh, four-footed creature, you... Excuse me, you shall not give your marriage bed for a discharge of semen to be thoroughly defiled by it, bestiality. And a woman shall not set herself to any four footed creature to breed, for it is detestable. So even a woman or a male, bestiality is definitely a no. Do not defile yourselves in any of these. For in all these the nations were defiled, which I eject before your face. So this was common practice with many of those people and may still be in many um, tribal units that are especially like in uh, remote areas. And the land was thoroughly defiled, and I recompensed injustice to them because of it. And the land is loathed, with the ones lying in wait upon it. The ones that are doing that, the land is loathed. So if a country is going back to all these things, then it will be loathed, I believe. And I see um, homosexuality is taking a rebound in the United States. A lot of these laws are not being followed. And so I believe that it's on a slippery slope uh, to destruction as far as the United States goes. I don't know about other countries. And you shall guard all my laws and my orders and uh, the native inhabitant and the one you unite and the foreigner uniting among you uh, shall not do any of these abominations. The proselyte, somebody's coming to live with you. No, there, nobody there in your borders are basically to do this. For all these abominations, the men of the land committed the ones being prior of you, and the land was defiled. And so was uh, the lands of a lot of places that uh, savages lived in 
down in South America and Mexico. Uh, they were they had uh, sacri- human sacrifices, cannibalism, and so forth. A lot of terrible things. And um, lest the land should loathe you and you're defiling it. So the land will not be conducive to doing things on it. It will go into uh, barrenness as Israel, the land of Palestine, went into for thousands of years after the Jews left it. Pretty much became a desert until the Jews have come back in 1948. Now it's like an oasis. They're one of the top fruit uh, exporters in the world and have replanted forests and all sorts of things. Now, I look at them as still defiling it, so I don't know how long this period of grace that God is giving Israel is going to last, but it continues in which manner it loathed the nations before you. So uh, how much bad it was before, if you do these things, it'll be bad to you. That all, whoever should do from all these abominations, uh, the souls doing them shall be utterly destroyed from out of the midst of their people. I change this in the next version. I'll have it one, two, three, rather than the way I had it with the parentheses. Uh, So the abominations. And you shall keep my orders so that you should not do from any of the laws of the ones being abhorred, which happened before you, and so that you should not shall not be defiled among them, for ego curios o theo simon. Now, the Jews did go into doing these things again, and we'll see uh, they left the God of Israel and went into the gods of the nation, starting with basically King Solomon. And when we get into uh, the books of Kings and Chronicles, we'll find out how bad things did get with these kings as they uh, were defiled among them. Good lesson for us today is to not be defiled among the nation that that we are inhabiting of the things that are against God. If uh, people around are all think that adultery is not a problem or we shouldn't even have marriage, then uh, it really makes for a a bad situation because basically if nobody's going to be married and everybody is having sex with everybody else, well then can you really commit adultery with somebody that's not married? And uh, if somebody had sex before they had sex uh, with you, not being a virgin, um, does that mean you should not end up marrying them if that comes up? There's all sorts of possibilities that go along with a country that is defiled. Homosexuality, if it becomes something that many, many, many people are doing, then uh, you might think, well, you know, this is okay to do. It's not harming anybody. Uh, It's just something that's between me and another person, if it's a male, male, female, female. But yet, to God, it is an abomination. So, uh, if the country that you live in is going the direction of being defiled, it's important to know what the defilements of God are considered. And the only way you can find that is by reading the Bible. And if you read the Bible and then you tell other people, well, uh, I don't do these things because the God of the Creator God doesn't want me to do them. He doesn't want that to be done. Now, if many people are doing these things, if the problem came up in the New Testament with Paul, that if can you go to a feast of the idols and he allows it he said yes you can go uh, to the feast of an idol but not necessarily if it's going to cause somebody to think that you are going along with their idolatry then you shouldn't uh, be doing it but he says you're not to be not for not Christians that are doing 
these defiled or abhorred things, these abominations, you shouldn't have anything to do with them if they are considered considering themselves to be Christians. But it, if it's the nations, the people that are not Christians are doing this, he says, well, if you didn't go among with them, then you would have to leave the world. And that was not what God wants. God wants us to go and be the light to the nations, to these people that are doing these things, and show them what God wants uh, in a way that I think that would be adaptable and that would work the best. You don't want to sit there and hit them over the head uh, for doing these things, but uh, be led by the Spirit to say the right thing at the right time. Chapter 19, now we go into laws of social uh, conduct. We'll find out what these laws are in chapter 19, the next video seminar. Hope you'll join us then. And till then, God bless.